today the most beautiful scenery here makes it difficult to understand that this was the very place of a uh, very hard war. We are standing at Dübel Banke, the most important Danish memorial landscape. It's a very important uh, place of memory uh, for most Danes because at this uh, very place uh, two wars took place in the middle of the 19th century. The first Lesbian war from 1848 to 50 uh, ended without um, any big results. But the second war, the war in 1864, resulted in a catastrophe for the Danish nation and the Danish state. Until that time, Denmark uh, consisted of a kingdom and uh, three duchies. And this conglomerate state was changed into a national state. Uh, the Danish government had to give up the duchies and the state of Denmark was reduced with 35 percentage of its territory and about 40 percentage of its population. After the war in 1864, the Danish battlefield was transferred into a memorial landscape. Um, lots of uh, small monuments with names of the leading German officers was placed around in uh, the fortifications and uh, in the middle of the battlefield a very big uh, German uh, monument of victory was established and unveiled in 1872. It was made by the same architect as Siegesäule in Berlin. The victory of Dübel was the first step uh, at the road which led directly to the establishment of the German Empire in 1871. In the German school books uh, you could read a sentence as Ohne Dübel kein Königgrätz, ohne Königgrätz kein Sedang, ohne Sedang kein deutsches Kaiserreich. So the first steps towards the establishment of the German Empire uh, was taken here at Dübel. We are standing in the middle of the former battlefield. Uh, at the battlefield uh, was a big windmill, the Dübel, uh, the Dübel mill. It was burnt down, bombarded and burnt down in 1864, but it was rebuilt after the war. And the Dübel mill became the very symbol of the loyalty from the Danish-minded Schleswiger to the Danish king and to the Danish nation. After northern Schleswig's reunification with Denmark in 1920, the German memorial landscape here at Dübel was changed into a Danish memorial landscape. About 100 small memorial stones with names of the leading Danish officers uh, was put up uh, uh, in many places in this landscape. So it was very important to uh, danify the landscape because at the very top uh, you still could find uh, the big German monument of victory. The 5th of May 1945, Denmark was liberated after more than five years of German occupation. Since 1920, the Danish dominance in the landscape has increased. Uh, and in 1945, uh, the German monument of victory was blown away, completely destroyed here at Dübel. Since then, there has been an increasing understanding that two nations uh, have got equal right uh, to be visible in this memorial landscape. And a proof of this uh, increasing understanding of a, mem of a shared memorial landscape is this stone with inscription in Danish and in German and the inscription tells us that uh, the uh, two first Red Cross delegates in the whole world uh, were 
uh, here at Dübel in 1864. This is a very important place. If one had to say which is the most important memorial place for Denmark, this would be Dübel. It's a place which represents the birth of the nation. It also represents a, a loss, a very significant loss. It represents in complicated way issues about loss of innocence. It represents a change in the nature of the nation and it has, for different generations, been used in different ways. But it has consistently been like the heart of the nation in terms of its history and in terms of its suffering. And it may be most potently expressed by this being the place of the big celebra celebration in 1920, when the place was returned. But it's also expressed by contemporary political uh, parties trying to place themselves in this landscape and make claims about that they are the ones who in some way are the natural inheritors to what this represents on where actually this place is for everyone and now for the two nations who were involved. For more than 80 years, uh, the main ceremony at Dübel uh, takes place uh, uh, at the uh, soldier's grave at the 18th of April every year. It's the day of the famous battle. Uh, until 2002, uh, you only would see uh, Danish delegates and Danish soldiers. But from then on, it has been a divided ceremony uh, with uh, both German and Danish soldiers, and it's another proof that today uh, the Danish population ha have accepted that this is a shared memorial place. How important is this case study for Crick overall? What particular issues does it raise that makes it so relevant? I think the project is very important to Crick because it gives us that long time perspective. When we look at the recent conflict, we can only guess about how it will unfold. Here at Dübel, you can see that it actually can undergo changes, that the meaning changes, also, very, very importantly, that reconciliation may be possible, that the place itself can be reinterpreted and reused in such a way that all the partners get brought in, and that we don't have not unfortunately seen in any of the more recent cases. So if we could understand how that happened, we may also be able to identify some of the instrument which is needed to further reconciliation around other places. So I think it is important for our project, it's important for the two nations, but it's also potentially important much more widely.